Chris Tanev is a Dallas star, and oh boy, Jim Neal outdid himself on this one. A complete masterclass as the stars are going all in. Let's jump into it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer of 105 Through the Fan and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Please be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Chris Tanev is a Dallas Star Stars Fans, they went out and got their guy, and oh boy, this was a complete fleece job from Jim Neal. This was a masterclass from the reigning GM of the year. Oh my God, I have to be honest, I was dreading having to record an episode for today. The stars have been struggling. It has been brutal, but I have a new spring in my step because it happened about an hour ago. Chris Tanev is now a Dallas star. I will not get over saying that for the next week. So bear with me. So much juicy stuff in today's episode. Giddy up. Put on your seatbelt. We're ready to rock and roll. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So we begin with the details of the trade. It can be very confusing. I'm going to simplify it to the best of my ability. The Dallas Stars they receive Chris Tanev, and this is the kicker: seventy five percent of his salary is retain how they did that well let's jump into it a bit more they also got Cole Brady by the way he's a goaltender he plays for the University of Massachusetts we'll jump into him a bit more later as well the Flames they get a 2024 second round pick they get Artem Grushnikov and a conditional 2026 third round pick and the Stars if they make the Stanley Cup that turns into a second round pick that's what the conditional third is four. That's who the stars are sending to Calgary. And then the New Jersey Devils received a 2026 fourth round pick and then 25% of Tanev's salary. So it can get very, very complicated in there. That's the best I can do to simplify it right there. All you need to know is Jim Neal got 75% of Chris Tanev's salary retained. (laughs) Like how? (laughs) Did <laughs> they allow that? <laughs> it is truly beautiful. And I'm not here to argue. I'm just super, super stoked that they just got a top four defenseman, a right shot defenseman for a bag of chips, basically. And Grushnikov is good, but you also hold on to Bischel. You hold on to Stankoven. You hold on to Bork your other top prospects, like the guys that are going to make an impact for you in the next few years are still in your system. It's brilliant. It's, it's truly brilliant. I can't, I'm just beaming with pride right now. And we talked about it yesterday. It felt like rock bottom. The stars have reached it. And immediately Jim Neal said, Okay, I've had enough. I'm fed up. I'm going to the phones right now, and we're making something happen. He outdid himself on this one. He really did. Oh, I'm so, so excited about Chris Tanev. If you're looking for physicality, if you're looking for grit, if you're looking for a tough guy that gets the job done, Stars fans, Chris Tanev is your guy, and the Stars have him. The Stars have holstered, bolstered their defensive core with this move. 
And mind you, they have the cap space and ability to make some more moves. They absolutely do. Because of the 75% of TANF salary retained. They have the ability to still make something happen. The trade deadline is still in a week. And this may not be the last move, but it is a great step in the right direction. Tanev, <laughs> by the way, has 171 blocks this season. That's a, a career high. That's second most in the NHL. He's a plus 16, only has 14 penalty minutes, and he skates just under 20 minutes a night. And we've heard Pete DeBoer talk about having a defenseman that can defend in his own zone without taking penalties. You can add Miro to that list. You can add Tanev. Now you can have Harley. <laughs> you name it. The uh, the stars are starting to build something. And they are pushing their chips to the middle of the table. We floated his name a long time ago, <laughs> a long time ago when the Flames were really struggling. And of course, everybody had their eyes on Tanev. Toronto was a team that was rumored to be in love with him and really wanted him, of course. But Jim Neal gets the job done. Um, And after last night's game, it was just, it was just defeating. You felt defeated. <laughs> like the stars really couldn't do anything about their situation. They had just been through so much recently. It just felt like nothing was going to get them out of this funk. And maybe this does. And look, they could lose tonight. And who knows if Tanev is even going to be in the lineup. We'll have to wait for uh, confirmation on that. But even if he's not and the Stars lose, <laughs> you have to feel really, really good about where they are heading. Some more stuff for you on Chris Tanev via hockey stat cards. An offensive rating of minus 1.5. That's not what they brought him in to do. He's got one goal, which came against the Stars. 13 assists, 14 points this season. Why they brought him in, plus 4.1 defense rating. Expected goals against 35.95. That's like... The 10th percentile <laughs> in the National Hockey League. He's not going to be dancing the blue line <laughs> and making incredible offensive plays, but that that that's not what they brought him to do. Who who can you pair him with? Uh maybe you want to throw him with Miro. That gets him on his left side. Maybe you can pair him with Harley. Maybe you pair him with Lindell. Who knows? The options are endless at this point. <laughs> and uh, he's a he's a good one, folks. He, he really is. Taking a look at uh, his uh, player card. This is via the Athletic. Uh, a plus four defensive rating. His forecast net rating for the entire season is plus three. Yes, he's not offensively gifted, but he's hungry. He blocks pucks wherever. He'll block them with his face. <laughs> he's a, a bruiser. He, he'll be great on the boards. He's phenomenal in front of his own net. He's responsible, which is exactly what the Stars need, right? They, they need somebody that can set up shop in front and just clean up messes, and uh, th they got him. They absolutely did. Um, this is so, so thrilling. Um, and uh, I'm beaming with pride. I'm, I'm giddy about this one. I, I, I truly am. <laughs> after after the, uh, the loss uh, uh, a, a night ago, you just felt defeated. Like, what can they do to right the ship? And this is a step in the right direction. Chris Tanev is a Dallas star. I can't believe they got 75% of his salary retained. And if I'm not mistaken, that's like 1.5 is what the stars are paying him. Let me get the confirmation on that. <laughs> and all, it, it, it truly makes me laugh. It, it's hilarious. 
what, what actually happened. So Chris Tanev at 1.125. 1.125. They have Chris Tanev, who will immediately be a top four defenseman, and Matt Duchesne at $3 million. <laughs> That's, uh, that, is, that is larceny. That is grand larceny. Wow. This is exciting stuff, folks. Chris Tanev is a Dallas star. 75% of his salary retained. Second round pick, third round pick, which is conditional. And then uh, Artem Grushnikov heads to Calgary plus the uh, 2024 fourth round pick, I believe it was, to New Jersey. I, I mean, who knows who, who Tanev plays with? You, you can... I would love to see him with Miro. You just get Miro on his left side, which he's never played. <laughs> Who knows what that's going to unlock. And Miro's had a pretty, pretty good month. Uh, even despite all the, the star struggles, uh, you're looking at a really, really good pairing. If that happens and maybe Harley can go back with Hawk and Pa or Lindell or Suter. I don't know. The options are endless. But it gives you, it, it it gives you options. You have a variety now. And when Niels Lundqvist gets back, if he can continue his growth, you have to feel really, really good. Um, and the thing that's baffling to me, and what I was completely wrong on, obviously, from yesterday, from yesterday's episode, if you're a lock on locked on stars every day or. I was saying the, the their leverage continues to slim with every loss. <laughs> I said if Calgary is watching last night's game against Colorado, you're thinking, yeah, I'll take a first round pick. Thank you very much. And this happens. <laughs> like you have no leverage. Maybe they did. I don't know. But they were one, three, and three in their last seven. They can't score. Can't defend, and this happens. <laughs> wow, great stuff! He's a hockey player. He's he's missing teeth, by the way, too, because <laughs> that is the uh, symbol of every great hockey player, as we all know. Great, great stuff. Great, great, fantastic stuff from the Dallas Stars. Chris Tanev is on his way. And the stars still have the ability to make some make some plays happen. They have the ability. Yeah, they um this this will go down as a good one, I think. This will go down as a good one. Um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh okay. Enough celebrating. We're we're going to take a, a dip, uh, a dip here in the excitement. Because the Dallas Stars top line has been a bit of a no-show lately. We're going to come back down to reality. Okay? I think we all need it. We spent the first 12 minutes just talking about how amazing they are. But work is to be done. And this top line needs to start chipping in offensively. Let's jump into it next in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked On. Stars is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind when you purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. We've all been there. You're going to a new stadium, a new arena, and you purchase some seats. You get there. There's a railing in, there, in your way. There's a piece of glass. Sometimes there's even a pole. I wouldn't have bought these tickets if I knew that. And that's why game time is the best. You can see the seat before you buy all in prices, show your total up front. So you know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps. They have exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals on basketball games. You want to go to the next Stars game, concerts, comedy, theater, you name it, they have it. Game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Go to lock on. Go to game time. 
Use the code locked on. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off on the game time app. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Be sure to check out Locked On Sports today. I'm sure they'll be talking about this Chris Tanev trade because they are here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. It's available on YouTube. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free TV channels app. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode of Locked On Stars. Follow Locked On Stars on Twitter. X, follow me, Joey the Jet, as well. Throwing out stuff every single day. By the way, Stars have a big divisional game tonight. They play the Winnipeg Jets. We can't forget that. And maybe they have a, a new friend in the lineup in Chris Tanev. But enough about that. We need to talk a bit, discuss what's going on with the Stars' top line. They've really hit a wall here in the month of February. Joe Pavelski, Rope Hintz, and Jason Robertson are really having trouble finding the back of the net. And I know the lines have been flip-flopped a bit here in recent weeks, but those three players from the original top line in the month of February, so the 12 games... Robertson has the most points of that trio. He's got eight in 12 games, but just two goals in his last 12. Joe Pavelski, we've documented his struggles scoring. One goal in his last 12 games, and he's got six points in the month of February. Rope Hints, which is the most concerning, just three points in 12 games. Games. He's got one goal in his last 14. And they both look like they're overthinking. I talked about this yesterday. They need to simplify a bit, be more direct. They always play their best hockey when they're direct, north and south, not trying to make the cute play, look for the 30 foot width of the rink pass, just put pucks on net. They've been really good, especially when they're putting shots on goal. They live somewhere 30 to 35 shots per game. They're getting chances and execution. Execution, it always comes down to that word. But as I mentioned yesterday too, they're not really producing chances, that trio. They have a few here and there, but not to the amount that we really saw in previous seasons. Robertson is pretty much a no-show on the power play. And why? I don't know. He should be getting chance after chance on the man advantage. Rope, with his speed, should be getting chance after chance, even on the power play, and he really has been non-existent in that front. But we haven't seen the, the burst from Rope as well does not seem to be firing on all cylinders. He looks frustrated. I see so many times lately, he just throws his head up to the rafters on his way off. So there's something there that's just not totally clicking. And Pavelski, I feel like, is in a a different space than those two because even when Pav has gone through these scoring droughts, he seems to be getting the the same looks he usually does, right? He's still in front of the net. He's still working on position and he's had some good looks. He's just not finishing. Even the the game against Colorado, he had that chance. I I think it was on the power play. It was late in in the, uh, the minor and he tried to move it to his backhand and put it on net and it just rolled off his stick. He's still getting some looks, but that's a, combined 17 points from that trio during that same spam. Look at Duchesne, Sagan, and Marchment. And of course, Sagan has been out now for uh, a few games. They have combined for 27 points in those 12 games. And Duchesne was at one of those games. Marchment's the only one that uh, has played all 12 here 
in the month. Um, uh, 20, uh, 26, excuse me. I think I said 28, 26 points during that stretch. And uh, if, if you want to count Johnston and Ben, they combined for 15 and throw Stankov in, in there. That's uh, 18 just for those three. Um, and, and that line has been all mumble jumbled recently until this last week with Stankov. And, and the Johnston Stankov line is really the only one that's looked good, even remotely good in the last like three games. So they, they need their top line to just get back on the trot a bit. And uh, I, I, I think it's going to happen. I feel like it's been a bit of a disease that's meandered its way through the lineup where all of them are just struggling. <laughs> um, and, and it feels like they're going to snap out of that funk. It just takes one or two shifts, maybe a goal here and there, and they'll, they'll start finding their touch once again. But there, there's no doubt about it that they need that top line. Whatever a symbol of a top line they throw out there needs to – to have some 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 contributions to the lineup because the Sagan line has been the most consistent all season. You have Stan Coven now that joins the party. He looks like the perfect partner to pair with Ben and Johnston. That line looks extremely good. The best they've looked all season, frankly. And then you have that fourth line, whether it's Delandria at Smith and Steel, whether it's Foxa, Smith and Steel, Foxa, Smith and Delandria. Now you have some room and opportunities to play with, and you did not give up Delandria. That could change here in about a week or so, but you still retain him. So, yes, the top line needs to find that spark again. And uh, then hopefully you start having positive snowballing effect <laughs> instead of negative, which uh, it kind of has been. Stars have a chance to stop the bleeding this month, sort of. They can put a patch over it with a win tonight against the Winnipeg Jets. At home, they're 2-0 against the Jets this season. Robertson's had his fair share of phenomenal goals against Winnipeg. Maybe tonight unlocks them. Let's preview those Jets in a huge, huge matchup in the Central Division, a battle for first place in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Sleeper. The trade deadline is here, Stars fans, and the Dallas Stars have made some Fireworks. Regardless of where the stars are in the current standings, their first place that could very well change. Don't come after me. <laughs> I want to remind you, though, you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey. Because of Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. All you have to do is pick the studs of the National Hockey League. We just saw Nathan McKinnon and what he can do. You have Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby, who's having an unreal year trying to push the Pittsburgh Penguins into a playoff spot. You all have to choose. Record more or less sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, even saves, plus minus in a given game. If you correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats, you could win 100 times your bet on Sleeper. You heard me, Stars fans. A hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention, nail those picks, and you could start winning big. Use promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get up to hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and with location availability. The Dallas Stars taking on the Winnipeg Jets at home. You can catch the hometown broadcast on the Sirius SXM app. Just go ahead and search Stars, a battle for first place in the Central Division. And yes, I know the Jets have a few games in hand, but first place nonetheless. Winnipeg, um, yeah, they're they're rocking and rolling. They're the best team in terms of suppressing offenses. They don't give up a ton of chances, and they don't give up a ton of goals, namely because Connor Hellenbach is a complete beast. In 42 games this season, 
Helen Buck has a save percentage of 925 and a goals against average of 2.21. And Laurent Brosseau, uh, Brosseau, excuse me, is having himself a year too. Just he's just played 15 games, but 922 save percentage and 2.26. Uh, goals against average. Kyle Connor is their their guy. He's he's incredible. Uh, in his last five, Connor has five goals. Uh, Morrissey is really turning it on lately. They're a fantastic defenseman that does not get a lot of talking. Uh, does not get talked about enough. He's got forty six points this season. He has eleven points in his last five. Uh, they're seven and three in their last ten. They've won four straight. Um, and the stars are going to have their hands full. They've won the first two meetings, three to two back in November and two to nothing. They've played some of their more solid games of the season against Winnipeg. We'll see how they fare tonight with, uh, all the, uh, all the struggles they've gone through. Uh, but who, who knows with the, uh, the Tanev signing and everything, maybe that gives them a, a little extra juice, um, and uh, we'll see how they, they fare tonight. Uh, but they played some really, really solid games. Uh, Winnipeg is big. Of course, they're physical. They they are kind of the embodiment of what the Stars really struggle against, but sometimes teams just have your number some years, <laughs> and maybe the Jets, uh, maybe the Stars have the Jets' number. Look, uh, Dallas beat Vegas all three times or was maybe it was four times last year in the regular season. And we all know how that uh, Stanley uh, or the Western conference final went. That's just, that's just how it goes. <laughs> you can't get too caught up in uh, random Tuesday nights throughout the season, even if it's supposed to be a, a measuring stick game. Um, but look, I, I can throw myself into that hat too. We live and die with every single game sometimes. And, you have to uh, sometimes come back down to reality. Against the Jets this season, just taking a look uh, at, uh, at point numbers and stuff, uh, the Stars have, uh, okay, this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> I guess uh, ESPN website um, is not going to see. let me see the splits for the Stars this season. Uh, against the Winnipeg Jets. It lets me for the Nashville Predators. Uh, I would love to see the two games uh, against the Jets. Um, I, I guess not. Either way, there is a, a shutout in there. <laughs> and uh, they'll uh, they'll have to uh, figure out a way to get the job done against a, a Jets team that is rolling. Um, and if Tanev's in the lineup, this will be a, a great look at uh, what the pairings are going to look like, what we can expect moving forward from the Dallas Stars. But you also have to realize Sagan is still out. Lundquist is still out. Hockenpah has to get himself back into a rhythm. I, I don't think Tanev is going to solve all their problems, but he will solve a few. And we'll take that for right now. Chris Tanev is a Dallas Stars. Is a Dallas Stars. 75% of his salary retained. We have to end on that note. In Jim Neal, we trust. We'll break down the game tomorrow. And we'll see you there. So long, Stars fans.